using online systems. So there are certain things that we need to consider when using online systems. Namely, they are going to be security, cost, ease of use, features, and connectivity. Now I'm going to quickly go into each of these, quickly break them down. This is not going to be a long one and explain to you why these are important. Okay, so the first one we're going to speak about is online security. So quite simply, doing stuff online, doing stuff over the internet, there are inherent risks that come with this. So there's always a potential to be hacked. There's always a potential to accidentally download or have some form of malware on your device. Even though we're using mobile devices and we think, oh, we cannot get viruses, it is still possible to get viruses on mobile devices. It's still possible to get malware in general on mobile devices. It is always a good idea to have some form of anti-malware software installed. So whether it be antivirus, a firewall, or a combination of both. This is normally the case when you have a Windows PC or a Mac OS PC. Now, many people don't actually do this, but it is highly recommended. For Windows nowadays, you actually don't need to buy any antivirus. I believe it's here. Uh, yeah, they have this version that comes built in with Windows. It is really, really good and it's completely free. Um, there's no point in buying anything anymore. But if you were to choose to buy something, because that's your choice, right? Uh, choose a company that has a known reputation for doing good. For example, um, it recently got released that Norton 360, probably a very bad antivirus to have. It will use your PC's power in the background to actually mine for cryptocurrency. And whatever profit it makes from that, it will take 15% of those profits from you. Now, this is not necessarily a really bad thing. It's just maybe not a good practice you would want to go into. Because, for example, other companies charge 1% or 2% profits. Norton is charging 15% of your profits okay uh, so but online systems there needs to be some form of security at all times there are always hackers trying to get malware onto your system to try and do nefarious things next we're going to have cost and when we're speaking about online services online systems like we did before in a previous video it's mainly going to be cloud storage and cloud computing platforms right now many cloud services so like google um, drive microsoft onedrive Dropbox, iCloud, they do give you some free storage per month. However, if you are a business, the free storage stuff really isn't going to work for you. Even myself as an individual, the 15 gigabytes I get from Google Drive is not enough because I back up my pictures, my videos, my, my WhatsApp messages, my contacts, my text messages, everything is being backed up to that. So the data limit, the amount of data they give is 15 gigabytes on Google Drive, which is the most anyone gives, and it's still not enough. So even though it's not an outrageous cost, there is a cost associated with using some of these online services and getting the best out of them. Um, for example, as I've said before, I pay £1.59 every month to get 100 gigabytes of Google Drive. Though those paid services are not good for everyone, if you're a very, very small company, maybe a couple employees, the paid services, sorry, the free services might be okay for you. But if you're a massive company, you want to have control over all those executive features where you can create user accounts for people. So for Microsoft, um, for example, and Google as well, create online accounts for people, then you're going to want to pay for the extra um, features that they have. Another thing we have to think about or consider is ease of use. Some online services, again, we're going to go back to Google Drive and OneDrive. Google Drive is probably going to be the best option for, let's say, people who have an Android phone because Android is made by Google. And maybe OneDrive is going to be best for people who have a Windows laptop because it's Microsoft that owns OneDrive and Microsoft that owns um, Office. Uh, sorry, not Office. Microsoft that owns Windows. So having those two services tied together might make sense. So the ease of use might be easier or might be better for those people simply because they're already used to that ecosystem. They're already used to how the features work. So as a basic example, uh, OneDrive comes installed with every Windows 10 computer, every Windows 11 computer. So all you have to do at that stage is log in and tell it which drives or which areas or which folders on your PC you would like backed up. And as soon as you put a file or folder into that PC, um, into that folder. So if you put a folder in there, it will back up the entire folder. If you put a file in there, it will back the file up. If you have a file already in there, once you edit it, and save it, it will automatically back that file up. So it might be better. So ease of use is quite important as well. What you don't want to do, the last thing people and companies want to do is spend time learning something that's completely new, that's completely different feature-wise, but does the same stuff in the background. 
I would say if people with a Windows laptop, Windows desktop, who want cloud storage, it might be best for you to stick with OneDrive. The price is not that different from Google Drive, but because I am a heavy Google user and I use my phone more than I use my laptop, it makes sense for me to go Google Drive. So we have to think about ease of use as well. Here on my screen, you guys can see I've typed in Word Online, so Microsoft Word Online versus Microsoft Word Desktop. So the program you install on your PC, uh, Microsoft Office, which gives you normally Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, versus Word Online, so Word on OneDrive. Now, feature set, so the amount of features that the program has is normally diminished, so it's normally less when you use an online version, when you use a cloud version. And Word is a perfect example of this. The Word version, the Microsoft Word version for online is a lot more slimmed down. It's a lot more, uh, well, it has a lot less features. And one of the reasons they might have done this is to reduce the strain on the servers. When you have something that has a lot of features, that's more data being transferred. That's more work the server has to do. So why not have a simplified version online, which this, that's ideally what most people use. I don't know many people that use the very detailed features of Microsoft Office Online. Most people that have Office, they simply use Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, and they do very, very basic things. There are very small sub there's a very small subset of people who actually need the very advanced features of Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. So having the features cut down in the free versions or the online versions make perfect sense. So this is just a rehash of the previous section. So connectivity is going to be very important because again, we're using cloud services, so cloud storage and cloud computing and by what by definition of what they are you have to have an internet connection you have to have an active internet connection where you can access these services so if you don't have internet let's say you don't have access to these services if you're a per, uh, uh, an individual it might not be that big of a deal because you can just wait a couple of hours or if it's not critical then it's not a big deal however if you're a company and you have all your services online that could be a big issue AWS, Amazon Web Services, they're a company that Amazon, obviously a subsidiary of Amazon, and they actually supply cloud services to other companies. So if Amazon Web Services goes down, we have hundreds and hundreds of companies around the world, both large and small, that are going to be massively affected by this. And Amazon could, in some cases, have to pay some of that money back because if you're a company that makes, I don't know, a million dollars a day, and because Amazon is down for an entire day, you don't make your one million, but you've paid them for 99.99999 to, to the seven places of accuracy of, um, of your data to be up, then that's going to be an issue. Now, what is remote working or what is remote work? This is something that's come up um, quite a bit over the last two years because of COVID. Many people have now been working remotely, which means that they're working from somewhere else that is not the typical place they, are, they used to work. So someone who used to work in central London is now working from home on a computer, accessing the services that they would at work over the internet, over the cloud, using cloud computing in some cases. Now, two of the things that actually allow this to work really well are VPNs and remote desktop technology. So what is a VPN? We've looked at this before. A VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. It's a service that provides you internet connection and privacy online. It's typically the privacy. People normally get their internet from somewhere else. So they normally get, let's say, Virgin, O2, TalkTalk, Talk, BT, Vodafone, and then they get the VPN software normally provided to them by the company that they work for. So the company I work for, they actually give me a VPN on my laptop. And when I need to access files on the server at work, I can log into that VPN and access the files just as if I were in the office. The next one we're going to look at is remote desktop software is normally called in some cases RDP. And all it means is that I can actually log into my computer at work from my house over the internet using a secure connection. This is normally built into some operating systems like Windows 10, 11. I've used it there before. In previous versions as well, it's there. But that's what remote desktop is. It allows me to log into my PC to, to do work from my house. This is also used for um, stuff like getting IT help. When people I know around the world actually need some help on their computer, I actually open this thing on my computer called Team Viewer, completely free program. They open it on their end as well. So I ask them to install it. They open it on their end. They give me their, let's see if I can find a screenshot of it. They give me their password and their username and I can log into that computer and I can actually take control of their PC from anywhere in the world. And I can actually find out if there's an issue that they have with software or hardware and I can tell them 
okay, this is what you go ahead, this is what you need to do to fix this issue without me being in their presence. So these are two very, very beneficial pieces of software for working from home, for helping people over the internet. So I no longer have to do a one hour drive to go and help someone or a half an hour drive to help someone. I simply log in, install this, give me the details and I'll fix it from my end.